It's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. You've been real live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatry. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing on this wonderful Tuesday, my friend? I am great, Peter. How are you doing? I'm living the dream. Uh, welcome, everybody. It is Humanware Live on Tuesday, um, April 14th. So we're, we've already done, this will be our 10th one of these live things, Andrew. So it's getting, uh, we're, we're just getting, we're getting seasoned with every passing week. And, and it seems like we've done two. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for it, man. I, I'm just, we'll just keep them, keep them flowing. So we're glad to be here. Um, it, this is Peter Tusick uh, and with Andrew Flatchers, and we are going to be looking at Google Sheets and Uber Eats. Uh, and also Andrew will be showing us how to work with applications, um, uninstalling, installing, and how to manage apps and then manage your main menu. Right, Andy? Right, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to your Uber Eats uh, section. Yes, there is. Uh, we're going <laughs> to surprise my wife. She does not know what we're having for dinner, and not, honestly, neither do I. But I might have a bit of an idea. So, what we're going to look at is we're going to lead with Google Sheets, and then I'm going to throw it over to Andrew for some application um, working with apps, and then I am going to take back control, and we're going to order dinner. Also, uh, if you want to provide us feedback, I know I've seen some messages coming in to humanware live at humanware.com. So feel free to send us suggestions. Again, if you need tech support, please go through the support channels. Um, humanware live is not really a tech support piece of things. It's more so for uh, the webinars and what you might like to see. Also, if you would like more information on how to receive notifications um, about our webinars, you can also always go to our website at www.humanware.com. At the bottom of the page, there is a subscribe link there and you can actually check various newsletters that you might want to subscribe to, to stay notified about our products. Okay, what I am going to do is I'm going to start screen share. I'm going to take this over and we are going to dive into using um, uh, some Google Sheets. We'll get into an introduction there. So working with spreadsheets via Google Sheets. I am taking control. We're going to share our sound and we're going to say share screen. And I'm going to come in here. Connect. Connect full screen button. You hear my speech, Andrew? Yes, I do. Love it. I'm going to mute it. Space. Speech on demand. All right. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my speech on, on my RailNote Touch Plus, and we're going to dive in and look at how we can create and, and also edit and look at information on a spreadsheet. So I'm going to turn speech on. Speech on. All right. That's a good start. I'm on the main menu, and I'm going to press the letter A to move to all applications. All applications. And I'm going to open that up by pressing enter or a cursor router key. Main menu, all apps. All right. Now, Amazon shopping. Everyone knows Amazon shopping is always the first one. One of these days we'll get in there and we'll, we'll surprise my wife with like some actual items at the door. I'm, I'm not saying gifts. I'm just saying something, maybe gifts, who knows, but uh, we will, we will hopefully get in there at some point, but let's press the letter S to move down to sheets. Screen mirror, screen lead settings, sheets. All right. And I just pressed my next thumb key a couple of times. You heard some other applications there. Um, but I'm coming down to Sheets, and I'm going to press Enter. Sheets. New spreadsheet menu button. Now, the first time you do this, and remember, Sheets, Google Sheets, does not come on your BrailleNote Touch Plus. It is on the BrailleNote Touch by default, not on the Touch Plus. So you will have to go into the App Store and download it, which Andrew is going to walk you through kind of the process of finding apps um, in, a, in a little bit. But once you install Sheets, there are a couple of initial screens you will have to contend with um, in terms of getting it going for the first time, much like Docs or um, Google Classroom, or there's always a couple of screens when you first launch an application um, for the first time that you need to contend with. So you're going to have to do some reading and making sure you're 
hitting the got it button or the continue button and so on. But once you're in here, it's pretty straightforward, right? We're using this to create and edit spreadsheets. Now, we're also, when, when we look at this, we're going to see that some things are doable and for some things, we definitely want to use um, other tools in our toolbox, right? We might use our computer with our screen reader to come in and actually do some heavy lifting or selecting multiple ranges and pages and you know formulas and all that stuff. Not to mean we can't do many things here, but let's keep that in mind. This is a mobile application that is going to be sort of a quick and dirty way to access and edit and work with spreadsheets. So I wanna create a new one. I'm gonna press letter N and you heard I would already be moved to that button because I'm already focused on it, but you will hear- Open a new spreadsheet menu. The new button. spreadsheet menu button. So if I press enter here, New spreadsheet button. It brings me into a place where I could choose a template. There are many different templates that exist. Um, you know, a lot of people use spreadsheets for budgeting. Um, you might use it to keep track of inventory. You might use these in different ways. So you can choose various templates. I'm not going to choose one of those templates. I just want to work with a blank, nice, brand new, just blank spreadsheet. So I'm going to press enter on the new spreadsheet button. And it will Untitled open. spreadsheet. Navigate up All right. button. And at this point, we are in our spreadsheet. Now, what we need to do, because this is, again, a spreadsheet is a very sort of visual way to represent information, right? It's, it's a very spatial way, not necessarily visual, but it's very spatial. So we need to interact with our touch screen to feel or to kind of move around this spreadsheet, to get around the grid. What we will do is when we want to find a specific cell, we're going to turn off touch rail. And I'll talk about why we need to use explore by touch. Because once we're in the spreadsheet, you can use your thumb keys, but you're not going to have much control over where you're going. You're just gonna move in a very linear, um, sort of top left to bottom right sort of way, moving cell by cell by cell. And it's not very efficient when we're looking at spreadsheets. So I'm going to turn off touch braille by pressing my previous and next thumb keys simultaneously. So your outer thumb keys simultaneously will turn off touch braille. Touch braille off. And now at this point, I can use one finger on screen and I can touch the different cells. C6, B4, B2, B2. A3. And so on, right? I just kind of was moving one finger around. But we know, for those of you who've ever used a spreadsheet, you know the very top left cell in a blank spreadsheet is A1. So I'm going to use one finger and come up to the top left corner of my sheet here. And again, you're just going to have to explore to figure this out. B2. A2. A column A. A1. A1. So again, I used one finger and moved all the way to the left of my sort of spreadsheet and then all the way up and here's a one at this point if i want to enter information into the cell i can push a cursor router button twice so any cursor router button i'm going to push it twice selected a one right and then i'm going to come in and it will enter text or formula edit box let me enter the text or formula so the first time you, you would be selecting the cell and then when you again when you push that key twice you will come into the enter text or formula edit box where you can enter information directly into this box. You can either use touch braille or you can now put your keyboard down, your braille keyboard down and actually type with the braille keyboard. For this example, I'm gonna use touch braille but I could absolutely put my keyboard down. But um, I'm gonna say in A1, let's just, let's just call this name. So again, I'm gonna type name. Dot dot n. And I typed the dot 5n because I saw a two dot cursor here, meaning you, I can use literary braille, whatever my literary braille code is set to. So I, I type name and I press enter and it will update this cell just like, much like Microsoft Excel does or, or even Sheetsworks on a computer. When you press enter. New line. Updated A1. It will say new line. Name. And it will say updated. Selected A2. It says it updated A1 and that's exactly what it should do. It moves you down to the, again, you're moving down by the column. So now I have the cell underneath it selected. Now I put name in A1. Let's say I wanna edit A2. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna create our, our kind of column headers here. So I'm gonna turn touch braille off again if, if I had used it, because I'm entering right now. I'd be entering text. I'm in an edit box. So if I started putting my hands on screen, it would be looking for text. If I turn touch braille off, touch braille I can off. now touch the screen and find different parts. B2, B column B, right. B1. So here's B1. Um, I can press a cursor router key twice. 
Enter text or formula edit box. Again, Selected B1. I'm going to be using Touch Brill here, so I'm going to type in, let's just say date. D-A-T. Or whatever I want, and I press enter, and it will update this cell. Date. Updated B1. Date. Selected B2. Right, and remember, when it selects the cell below, you're still in an edit box. So if you want to find a different cell, you're going to have to turn Touch Braille off and find that cell. Let's update C1 as well. Touch Braille off. So I'm going to again turn Touch Braille off with those outer thumb keys. B2. B1. Column. Columns. C1. C1. I found it with one finger. I'm using a cursor router key twice. Enter text or formula edit All box. Right, and we are Selected going C1. To say we have name, we have date. Let's just say, oh, I don't know, time. D -d -d T. Okay, and I'm going to press enter. New line. So again, updated C1. What we're seeing time. here is selected C2. That I'm able to enter information into these boxes which is all fine and dandy, but how would I then review that information, right? How am I gonna know what was in a particular box uh, or a particular cell, right? When we use, um, we, uh, you know, when we're using spreadsheets, we generally look at the information once it's been entered or information that has been provided to us. So if I turn Touch Braille off, touch Braille what off. I'm able to do is as I feel a, a cell that has a value in it. So if I touch A1 or A2. Column B1, date. Black font. It tells me that date is in that cell, and I'm reading that on the Braille display as well. And again, the word date is followed by a dots two, three, and you're gonna know, you're gonna see that after any entered value, because that will tell you that the value is in. And if I look at the cell to the right, so if I move my finger to the right. C1, time, right, and so black on. font. And it tells you the type of font. You could change these sorts of things um, once you have that cell selected. You could come in and enter formulas or, or mess with things in many different ways, but you are able to see what happens here um, and what the value is or the, or the, you know, the words or the value of a cell by touching it with a finger. If you just use your next or previous thumb keys, you will move through this by the sort of small grid, meaning you're going to move from top left to bottom right in a very slow succession. So if I start at A1, a1. And I use my next name, thumb key. Black font. I will not be able to move up and down. There's no, we're working on commands, but there are no commands to do that. I need to use explore by touch to look at cells in different locations of this spreadsheet. If I just use my next thumb key, I'll just be moving to the right. So I'm on A1. B1. And then B1. Date. C1. And then C1. Time. D1. And then D1. E1. E1. A2. And then over to A2. So again, what if I wanted to go to F1 or L4, and so on. You have to use gestures to adjust the window, the viewing window on your screen. So in order to do that, again, if I'm using one finger on screen, the furthest to the right that is currently focused here. B C3, D3, e. D4, D3, E3. So I go over to E, and I can't go any further to the right. But if I use two fingers and I swipe left, or you drag left, I will now adjust the viewing window. So now all the way to my right. F4. Right. G4. F and G. But again then, if I go all the way over to my left with one finger. D5. C5. B5. I don't have A Low here five. B5. Right? So if I want to move back to A or bring A into focus, I need to drag two fingers to the right like this. And now when I use one finger, I should come over A8. and here's my A's. Right. You can also use two fingers up and down. So if I use, if I slide up with two fingers, I'm going to be looking further down my spreadsheet. I might need to find, uh, we get these, sometimes I get spreadsheets with these numbers and I need to always go to column 90 or, or um, cell number like A92. So I have to swipe, you know, up quite a bit with two fingers and move that focus around. So again, you're going to be able to find those. It can be frustrating. And by all means, if you have some very complex spreadsheets, this might not be the right option for you. You might want to bring this into a computer um, and look at Notification, it another way. Notification, if I enter text or formula, edit box. Notifications. Um, but you'll be able to kind of move that focus around. So again, if I drag down with two A10. fingers, I will then bring my focus back. B3, spreadsheet. A3, row 3, so A, column A. Now, right A3. now I'm on A3 is the top one in focus. So I need to continue to drag down with two fingers. B1, bring it back up to date, A1 and B1 black font. So again, what you're seeing here is the ability to move around 
and work with a spreadsheet. This application, much like Google Docs, much like Google Drive, right, these are third party apps. There are many things you can do in them um, in terms of functionality, but you need to know where to go. So you're gonna have to do some exploring. Um, and there are some things that just aren't doable, right? If we're using a screen reader with a computer, for instance, you know there's a command to get the column header or the row header. That doesn't exist here. Um, not as of yet, this is just a mobile app. You would have the same experience on your iPhones um, or on, on typical sort of tablets with this type of, of thing. So again, can be done um, and it's very useful, especially if you need to throw together shared spreadsheets. That's the beauty of Sheets is I can make it, I can share it with Andrew, um, which we, you know, or with anyone, we can look at how to share a document in a future Humanware Live webinar, but you can certainly share access right in the app so Andrew could look at this spreadsheet as well or input values and so on or maybe build something for me and I can review it later. So that's a very brief sort of introduction into sheets. When I'm done with this sheet, um, I can always press the letter D. Discard changes. Discard changes button, but if I press D done, again, button. here's my done button and I can press enter. Add grid C2. Now I'm done editing and I could come up to the top and actually title top. this. Undo, but redo, but format, right. and insert, you'll see some different button. things here with inserting and redoing. And again, all of this can be manipulated when you start to work with the different values in your cells. But uh, by all means, you can title this and save it and share it and do what you need to do. Andrew, my friend, I am throwing it over to you with apps. That's awesome, Peter. Thanks very much. And uh, I was hoping to see some if statements there and uh, all kinds of different formulas. <laughs> you, can do that on a, you can do that uh, next uh, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can certainly put those in, though. You can definitely make, you know, the sum of A1 to A4 equals B6. You, you can do those sorts of things um, if you know what you're doing with, with spreadsheet formulas. And I'm sure there was a, a, an easier way, I suppose, to uh, just swipe in to, to actually go to a, a particular cell. Um, if you was open up the contextual menu of the app, you can go to, to a, a There is a cell. find and replace uh, option in there, which is absolutely true. Sometimes it does not really bring your certain cell into focus. So it can work. Um, but it's more of a find and replace, not a go-to. Um, there are, and again, it, it, these are things that have worked and then have broken and then have worked again. So by all means, um, if someone's listening to this in two to four months or weeks or a year from now, this could be very different. It could be much more usable. And we can also work on things too, right, Andrew? I mean, we're looking at how we can be moving by columns or how we can do some of this stuff as we move forward on the humanware side. Correct. That is something that we are looking to work on, certainly dealing with tables uh, within keyword and, and also within sheets. So we are looking at ways to improve, uh, making it more efficient um, to, to navigate around these types of tables for sure. Cool. Right. Okay. So on to my topic, which is all about applications. And I've got four objectives that we're going to cover. Um, first one is learn how to add, remove applications from the Play Store. This could include things like Uber Eats and Amazon Shopping. Uh, learn how to disable those annoying application notifications. So sometimes whilst you're working on the touch, you'll get a, a pop-up notifications, just like we, uh, we, we witnessed there with, uh, with, with Peter. Uh, you can certainly disable those notifications. Uh, we're going to show you how to learn, um, to customize your main menu uh, with your favorite applications. This was introduced in um, a recent update that was, that was made. So some of you may not be aware of this. And then finally, we're going to learn how to remove the default app applications. This is something that was brought up in previous webinars where you, you want to select a particular application to open it with. However, it's stuck on a, on a certain app. So how do we remove that? How do we uh, select a dip, an alternative application instead? So I'll show you how to remove that, um, uh, that application. So um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so, and, yep, let's now. Email, email. Awesome, okay, great. So, first of all, in order to install applications, you will require a valid Play Store account. Now, if one does not have one, then you'll be prompted at the start of loading the Play Store. You can, of course, use any of your existing Google email accounts. Um, so that'll be the first thing that you will need to have. Now, you don't need to 
put any credit card details in to have a play play account you'll only need that if of course there's an application that you'll need to need to pay for um, but if you're like me I don't like to pay for applications I'll just go with a free version so uh, the first thing we're gonna do from that main menu is navigate to the Play Store so I can press the letter P to jump straight to that Play Store internet Chrome Play Store there we go and I can press enter or I can press the cursor key to select that Play Store for you so upon pressing the, the, the Play Store, um, you could be, depending on if you've been on this application before, you could actually be in a, like focused in a different location at this stage. So what I always recommend, once you finish with the Play Store, I would always recommend to exit out each time. So press in space with the letter E, or you can use your back button to escape. It's just makes, it just makes your way of, of using the, the Play Store a lot more easier. So uh, upon pressing the Play Store, I now need to navigate to the search bar. And again, there are quick ways of doing this. The quickest way to do that is navigate, uh, well, sorry, is press the letter S for search. So as I press the letter S. Show navigation, draw button. Uh, that's the show navigation. I'm going to press the letter S again. Search for apps and games. And there we have search for apps and games. I'm going to press enter to, to come into this edit box. Search for apps and games edit box. And now this is where I'm going to type my application that I want to search for. Now the application I'm going to search for is the Amazon shopping app. I like to do a lot of shopping on Amazon, in fact, and that's what I've been doing in recent weeks, in fact, um, is buying a lot of stuff on Amazon. So um, I'm just going to type in Amazon A M A Z O N shopping S H O P P O G G O D I N G navigate up button. And then press the enter key after you've typed in your application. Now then you'll be presented with a, a long list of all applications uh, that have your keywords in that you've just typed. I'm just going to use my next thumb key to navigate forward and uh, wait until I, I can read Amazon Shopping. Amazon Shopping Search. Google Play Voice Search. Amazon Shopping. Amazon Mobile LLC. Wish. Shop. Amazon Shopping. Amazon Mobile LLC. Shopping Star Rating. 4.1. 100M Plus. Okay, that's the application. I'm going to press enter to go into that app. Details for app Amazon shopping. Now, once I go into the application, you can find a little bit more about the app if you wish. You can find out how many, um, how many people have downloaded, uh, reviews, uh, find out a bit more detail if it's the right application. But if you, if you know that is the application that you want, there should be an install button that is located. And again, you can navigate to that install button by using your next and previous thumb keys to go by item or you can simply press the initial letter i so i'm going to press the letter i image of app or game icon for amazon shopping button press the letter i again install button there we have it and press enter now that will start to download and it all depends on your of course internet speed um, at this point, you can return back to that main menu and you will be notified of the status of the applications in your notification bar. So to access your notification bar at any point uh, from that main menu or anywhere within Keysoft, you can press enter with the letter N for notification. And that will tell you if that application has been successfully downloaded or not. Once the application has been downloaded, all of your applications, all of your third party applications will be under the all applications category. Okay, and we will review that in just a moment once this is downloaded. Once this is downloaded for me, there should be an open button um, at any point I can Notifications, well. preparing three full stop, preparing three full stop. So it's just downloading at the moment still. Okay. So again, this is does depend on the internet speed. Obviously, there's a couple of people probably using my my bandwidth here at home at the moment. It's uh, it's it's getting across the ocean, Andy. <laughs> it's like coming underneath some uh, some some North Sea right now and and I, I find this fascinating because even here um there are times of day where things go a little slower depending on the traffic in your area too so you'll notice sometimes that your internet speed is flying blazing fast at 8 a.m and a little bit different uh in the afternoon or evening so at any point i could just press enter with n to review my notification collapse expand w x plus nine expand google expand clear all notific bottom battery charging 100 percent 
and it should have been displayed in my notification but I'm not just cleared that so play store contains ads go back to that main, main menu, menu. contact uh, key list well, we're going to review that under the all applications so I said all applications um, so all of your third party applications would be stored under all apps so I'm going to press a all applications and press enter to go into that main menu all apps Amazon Kindle and here is an all in alphabetical order so I'm just going to look for Amazon shopping Amazon music Amazon shopping Okay, and there we have Amazon Shopping. So it has been, it has installed. So the first things that we need to make sure is, of course, you need to have a valid Play Store account to, to be able to download that application. Now, um, once you've installed the app, I'm just gonna now show you how you disable any notifications. So before we uninstall this application, I'm gonna show you how to disable any, appli any ap application notifications that could be happening under this apps. So uh, this applies to, all apps you know it's not just the um, Amazon shopping you can go to the Amazon Kindle app you can go to Gmail app if you get notifications during your workflow that and it becomes annoying then you can follow these steps as well so the first thing that you need to do is navigate to the application and open the context menu by either pressing space with the letter M or long press of that app switcher button that's the square shaped button at the front so I'm navigating to Amazon shopping I'm focused on Amazon shopping at the moment I'm going to press space and the letter M context menu open app info okay the first in the list is open app info I'm going to press enter here main menu all apps Amazon Kindle, App Info, Amazon Shopping, installed. Now under the App Info, this is where I need to go to my app notification. So I can continue to press the, the, the next thumb key, or I can press the letter A if you already know that there is a, a label that, that begins the letter A. App Notifications. Okay, press Enter on App Notifications. App Notifications, Amazon Shopping. Okay, so here in some applications will allow you to configure what notifications can be sent to you. So uh, there's various of different options under the Amazon shopping here. Some may differ from, from other apps, um, but if you just want to turn all of your app notifications that relate to app, uh, sorry, Amazon shopping, then you can go to the on field on. and you could press enter to switch them on. off. So all of your notifications uh, that are from Amazon shopping will not be notified. So you won't get those notifications pop up or make a, a noise at any stage. Okay, um, let's go back to that main menu. App info, app notif main menu, contact, key list. So we've gone through how to install the apps. We've now gone through how to disable any notifications um, that apply to, the, to that particular application. I'm now going to uninstall the app. Okay, so similar to the first set of instructions for disabling notifications, we need to navigate to the application that you want to remove. So again, I'm going to go to my all applications. All applications. Enter. Main menu, all apps. And Amazon I'm going to Kindle. go to Amazon Shopping. Amazon Music, Amazon Shopping. Amazon Kindle. Amazon Music, Amazon Shopping. And I'm going to open up the contextual menu, so space with the letter M for Mike. Context menu. Open app info. And press enter on open app info. Main menu all apps. Amazon Kindle. App info. Amazon Shopping installed. And then now should be an uninstall button. So again, you can use your next and previous thumb keys to navigate, or you could press the letter U. Uninstall button. And there's the uninstall button. I'm going to press enter. Press the cursor key. Alert. Amazon Shopping. Do you want to uninstall this app? And Cancel. you get the OK. You get the prompt. Are you sure you want to uninstall? You can jump to the OK button by pressing the letter O. OK button. And press Enter on OK. Alert. And that will now Amazon Shopping. Uninstall apps. Amazon that, Kindle. That is uninstalled the application. Okay. So again, any applications that you do download from the Play Store will be linked to your Play account as well. So just because I've uninstalled it here, I can actually search for it again in the Play Store. Notification um, logged out of WhatsApp. Your phone number. There's one of those annoying notifications. I need to turn that one off, in fact. Um, but if, you, if you've downloaded an application and you've actually paid for it, it will be linked to your Play Store account, okay? So it doesn't mean that if you remove it from here, it's gone forever and you need to pay for it again. You just simply go to that Play Store account, um, the same account that you used to pay for the app, and then reinstall it again. Okay, next one then uh, on the agenda is customizing the main menu. Now, customizing the main menu. Main menu, contact, key list. 
what is great about this enhancement, it allows you to add your most frequently used apps in one place. And just like we could do on all our mobile devices, the last thing you want to do is having to keep swiping through several pages to get to your most used app. And in fact, it makes it a lot more efficient and avoids you having to go to that all application each time like, like we're currently doing here. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you are at the main menu. So press on all six dots with space to get to that main menu. Then we need to activate the customized menu by pressing the letter X with backspace and enter together. That's the letter X with backspace and enter together to change it to my menu. Let's have a look. Let's give it a go. My menu. Braille notepad. Key BRF. So on initiating this, you will have a limited amount of applications displayed in your main menu. So this is the first time that you're doing this. Um, it will look a bit different to what mine is. You'll probably have a few apps, keyword applications, email applications. And from that, you can customize it even more. So you can remove apps and you can add, add applications. And that's what we're just about to, to do here. So uh, the first thing I want to do is let me add one of my... Um, Amazon Music as one of my favorites. So this is my main menu at the moment. And as I go forward, Email, file map, internet, play store, quick support, word process, zoom, all applications, bottom. Okay, I've already customized some of this. I'm going to go to all applications first. Main menu, all apps, Amazon, Amazon Music. And now I'm, I'm at Amazon Music. Now, uh, the good thing here is the most common command or what the common command that we'll use shares the same meaning as all of our other applications like bookmarking. So if you've been to any of our previous webinars, how to bookmark a, um, bookmark something in easy reader or bookmark a web page on Chrome, we're going to be using the same command. Enter with the letter M. That's going to be used to add and remove your applications to and from that main menu. So here I'm going to press enter with the letter M. Amazon music added to menu. That's now added. I'm going to add an, my Amazon Kindle. Amazon Kindle. Enter with the letter M. Amazon Kindle added to menu. Now I'm going to return back to the main menu just to show you that it's there. My menu. Amazon Kindle. And there we have it. We have my Amazon Kindle and Amazon Music. Amazon Music straight on that my menu. So no longer do I need to go to all applications and search for it. It's a it's an application that I'm going to continuously use each time. And we've tested this from hundreds of apps under my menu. Uh, I believe you have, Peter. You've tested about 150 applications to really give it a good go, and it was fine, right? It, it worked with every single one. I don't know if I'd recommend that being your main menu, but you <laughs> can search and certainly, uh, <laughs> certainly make it happen if you wanted to. <laughs> cool. Now, if you want to remove it, again, the same command that's going to be used. Uh, the only different um, option here is you will get a prompt to say, are you sure you want to remove it? So I'm going to remove the Amazon Music by pressing Enter with the letter M. Alert. Are you sure you want to remove Amazon Music from this menu? Cancel. Okay, and there will be a Remove button, so I'm going to press the letter remove R button. and press Enter. My menu. Amazon Music removed from menu. Internet. Chrome. Okay, and that's how you remove those applications. Now, at any point, you can decide to switch back to the default menu by simply pressing the same command you used to enter the custom, uh, to enter the customized menu. So X with backspace and enter. Let's give it a go. Main menu all apps. Amazon Kindle. Okay, it's now reverted me back to my main menu. Contacts key list. Default main menu. So at any point, I'm going to customize it again. I'm going to go back to my customized menu. Backspace enter X. My menu, Amazon Kindle. And back again. Main menu or apps, Amazon Kindle. Main menu, contacts, key list. Okay, so that's how you customize that main menu. Um, next one, and the last one on the agenda is how to remove the default applications. Um, now, this can be useful to know in those situations where certain applications were used to action where, where you've selected to open it with. So for example, if you've uh, selected a file to always open with Microsoft Word, uh, each time you press enter that in, in file manager, it's always gonna do that. Uh, and instead you wanna open that within keywords. So how, can you, how can you change that? Um, so this happens when, you've, when you're first prompted by Android to open which application. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean first of all by, by this. So I'm gonna show you, I'm going to, go to file manager here. File manager, key files. Press enter. Key files, document.docs. 
Okay, so this document I'm going to share. Now I want you to have a look at what it's going to uh, give me in terms of the options of applications to use. So first of all, to share this document, I'm going to press space with M to open my context. Context menu. Mark slash unmark. Backspace without share. And press the letter S to share. Share with. Key mail. Now, this is the crucial point. This is what's asking me. The Android is telling me, well, what would you like to use? Which application would you like to use to share this with? Now, Save for now, drive. I'm going to use Save to Drive. And you'll also then have two further options, a Just Once button and an Always button. And you'll hear us say each time that we'd recommend to use Just Once button. But I'm going to choose Always. So I'm going to press the letter A. List. 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 Always. Bottom. Teams. Always. Button. Always. Button. So this is now saying any time that I share any of my files, it's always going to open up with G Drive. Edit box. Document. Dot docs. Save to drive. Okay. So just to show you now, I'm going to do another document. Key files. Document 2. Docs. Okay. I'm going to share this one. So I'm going to open up context menu. Context menu. Mark slash share. unmark backspace share. Edit box document two. And straight away it takes me to save to drive. It didn't give me that prompt. So this could be quite annoying, especially if you want to use a different application. So for now, I actually want to use OneDrive instead of save to drive. So what I now need to do is clear the defaults on that application. So the first thing you need to do is, is know what application that it's open. Now I know it's open up the, the G drive. So I need to navigate to that G drive application. So back to main menu. Main menu, contact, key list. I'm gonna to go to G drive application, which is under my all apps. All applications, main menu, all apps, Amazon Kindle, Gmail. That's uh, called drive, sorry. Dictionary, docs, drive. Okay, and I'm not going to press enter, but I'm going to open up the contextual menu again. So space with M. Context menu. Open app info. I'm going to choose open app info. Main menu or apps. Amazon Kindle. App info. Drive installed. Now under here, there should be a clear default button. So again, I can use my, my next thumb key. This force app permission. Store it. Data use battery. Zero open by default. Memory 207 advanced. Memory 200 open by default. Some default set. Okay, do so apologize. Open by default is where you'll need to navigate. I'm going to press enter on open by default. Open by default. Drive 2.20. And this is where there should be a clear default option. So I'm going to press the letter C to clear defaults. Clear here. defaults button. And press enter. Okay, so Wait that's now cleared. Contact key list. So let's try it again. I'm going to go to file manager. File manager key file. Edit box, save to drive. Edit box, document Previous. two. Okay. Do end of field. Choose. Key files. Document dot docs. Let's choose a document again, so space M. Context menu. S for share. slash unmark, backspace share. Now upon pressing enter, I should now get the Android options. Share with, save to drive. Okay, oh. and there we have. And just remember when you do choose one of these applications, just make sure you choose the just once. And unless of course you are more advanced, there may be situations where you perhaps want to use, um, you know, select always all the time. And in some cases, you may want to always share your documents to drive. So that would be the only time that I would recommend, but uh, just be a bit more flexible. Just choose just once. Okay. So that is me done. Menu. Um, Contact key list. We have now learned how to remove and install apps on the Play Store. We've disabled those annoying notifications that pop up. Uh, customize that main menu with your favorite apps, and we know how to remove those default applications. So over to you now, Peter. Rock and roll. Uh, let me grab this, grab the screen from you here. Yes. Um, Give me one second. There we go. All right, now we are going to talk about having some fun with Uber Eats. And I was tempted to actually ask my wife what she wanted for dinner, but then I thought, you know what? It's way funner to just think of something. Um, and there, and for, for anyone who knows me, I'll eat anything under the sun. So we've been eating very healthy lately. 
uh, well, I shouldn't say very. Let's also be real. <laughs> I'm relatively healthy because my I'm very fortunate to live basically with a chef. But tonight we're going. We're gonna. I think we're gonna go a little junk food um, for these for these times of times of quarantine. But let me come Zoom. in and Connect. focus on the Connect. radio Connect. and mute my speech. All right. Can we Space. can we Space. decide what to order, Peter, for you? <laughs> well, you can. I mean, I, I think, yeah, we, we can actually make a choice. We're, we're going to look at a place that I've wanted to try. I've actually never had it. And I've been thinking, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to, we're going to pick a place called Lucy's, which is here in Chicago. And it's, we're going to do cheeseburgers and good stuff like that. The, the nice thing about this, everybody. So I show this not because I want everyone to go out and order Uber Eats, but it's more so um, think about delivery apps as a way for you to look at menus when you might not be able to find a menu online. So a lot of times you're sitting at a restaurant and you're with someone and maybe you don't have a KNFB reader or you don't have an app um, to help read a menu or maybe you just can't, don't have access to a menu and you want to know you're going out with a friend or you're taking someone on a date, right? And you would like to be a little bit familiar with the menu before you get there. I often will use these apps like Uber Eats or Grubhub or there are many out there to look at menus before I go to a physical um, restaurant so that I know kind of what's available because the odds are if something is on a menu um, for a delivery service it's probably up to date uh, many of us have also gone to restaurants where you think you know what's on the menu and you looked at an old menu and they're like nope we don't have that anymore we haven't had that since 2015 and you're like oops well please update your website but um, I will use things like Yelp or Grubhub or all of these to look at what's available at restaurants Today, I'm going to use Uber Eats because one of the benefits of Uber Eats, and you can do this with different services, is I can order food for tonight. Um, it is currently, well, if I press enter with T, it is 1142. Speech on. Here in Chicago. So I don't want dinner at noon. Um, I'm going to have some awesome chicken soup for lunch that was homemade, but I'm going to, we're going to order this food for tonight to actually be dropped off. So that's why I like Uber Eats. You can actually order food for tomorrow or Thursday or some other day of the week. So I'm going to press the letter A and come to all applications. All applications. And remember, what I could have done is just put Uber Eats right on my main menu um, with the technique that Andrew just showed you where you can press enter with M and actually throw that right on. But let's press enter on all applications. Main menu all apps. And we're going to press the letter. Showing menu. items 1 to 6 of 100 and Uber. Here's Uber. Showing items 100. press my next thumb key and come down to Uber Eats. Uber Eats. All right. Now, I want Uber Eats. I'm going to press enter. And again, the first time you do this, you need to log in or create an account or whatever you're going to have to do to get your information in. You are also going to see my home address. So lucky you. Uh, everyone gets to know where I live, but that's okay. Just uh, behave. Portrait. So. Uber Eats. Orange chicken served with. All right. So at this point, it brings up because I, I wanted to show what this looks like if you were previously somewhere. I was looking at um, a Chinese menu earlier with lots of different things on the menu, but I'm going to press my triangle and actually my back button, right? Or space with E and come out of this menu. Food in your area. Best Buy Chinese Kitchen. I'm press Dollar. My back button Asian. One more time. Chinese. 30 40 min. So 4 I was in the search. There are tabs across the bottom where you can actually search for food or look at home. Remember, when you're in an application with tabs, the quickest way to get to the bottom right corner of that screen is 4-6 with enter. I know there are tabs down here. Account. Here's my account tab. So again, I pressed 4-6 with enter. I'm now down on that bottom right. If I come up with my previous thumb key, I'll see these tabs. So I have account. Orders. Orders. Search. search home. And home. These are my four tabs. If I pressed it again, I would come up into the list pizza. of like choices, pizza and various things. But if I press H, I can also find home, home. and I can press enter and activate home. my home tab. Showing so items three to I five. If I come to the very top of my screen. Top. ASAP. Right. I have it set to ASAP, and here's my address. If I press my next. Original key, Maxwell Street, Harrison, and Indica. We're going to see some different restaurants here that are featured. There are also sometimes places you can share a delivery order with to get a free delivery and so on. There are many kind of things going on here. But if I want to actually search for a restaurant, I want to activate that search tab. So I'm going to press the letter S. Search. And press enter. Sir, top categories. All right, and now I activate the search tab, but to actually search for something, I need to come to the top of my screen where I'll have a search box. So one, two, three with space. Top. 
Search for a restaurant or dish. Edit box. Right, and this would be where I can search for a restaurant or dish. So again, you, you can search for a restaurant. Now, before I do this, what I need to do is I need to set that delivery time. So let's come back to our home tab. Home. And I'm going to come home. to the very top of my screen where it'll say ASAP, and it's going to give my address and so on. ASAP. Now, I'm going to activate this. Delivery details. And I'm going to come to the bottom of my screen because this is where I can actually change the time. Bottom. Set so schedule I press order. my previous thumb key. Once I come to the very bottom, there's a save button. But if I press my previous thumb key or I press the letter S a couple of times, you will see schedule and order. And I'm going to press enter here. A28 as May right, Street. You see the different addresses I have in this list, and these are various places around the country and different places. But if I come down, I'll see that my address is currently selected. Home, work, 45 double three, 8201 house, right. A26 so as May Street. Leave a door. I've Please been, leave on front step. Right, I have it set to leave. You can drive down Fire Lane House is on. You have my instructions. Edit delivery note. Right. Selected. And you see that it's selected. So I have some instructions in here because I live on a on a fire lane and things like that. So telling them to leave this at my door and so on. Now if I come down, I will see Save places when ASAP as soon as possible. So this would be if I wanted it as soon as possible, but if I come down one more time. Schedule an order. I have scheduled selected. An order right and it is selected so i come down and i can choose schedule a date my date set time and my time so if i activate the schedule a date option schedule a date it brings up pop -up a window. pop up window today april 14 oh, i do want dinner today so i'm going to i could change it so if i press my next thumb key i'm now on a list i could change it tomorrow, tomorrow april 15 april 16 so april 17 right, so i could set a delivery for friday night and really surprise my wife because i'd probably forget about it and then we'd come home and there might be food outside the door or something crazy like that but let's actually i guess i wouldn't be going anywhere <laughs> nowadays so we might actually be in the house and be cooking dinner and then the food would show up but i'm going to say today to today april 14 okay. Delivery details. So today is selected. Today, app set time. And then let's set a time. We want dinner to come at a certain time. So I'm going to press enter and it'll bring up various delivery windows. Pop up window. 1 o'clock p.m. minus 1.30 p.m. So these are your different window options here. So here's 1 to 1.30. Let's move it forward. 1 to 2.45 2, 2, p.m. minus 6 o'clock p.m. All right. We're going to be early eaters tonight because let's say, let's do 5.45. 5.45 p.m. minus 6.15 6, p.m. 15. So 5.45 to 6.15 this evening is what I want. I'm going to press enter. Delivery details. Okay. 5.45 p.m. minus 6.15 so p.m. So I've set the date, I've set the time, and now I have a save button. Save button. Down at the bottom here, I just pressed my next thumb key because I had left that pop-up window. I'm going to press enter on save. Loading. It's going to load. Loading. The menus that would be available for tonight. Food in your area. Right. Today, 8.26 and it says, says instead of saying ASAP now at the top of my screen, it says today. So again, I'm, I've set the time. Now let's find the restaurant. I'm going to activate that search tab because I don't really want anything on this main screen. I'm going to press the letter S. Search. We find search. I press enter to activate that tab. Search. And then I'm going to come up to the top of my screen to find that search box. Top. Search for a restaurant or dish. All right. Edit box. Now I want to search for a restaurant or dish. You could type in cucumbers or pickles or lettuce or chips or anything in here, but I'm going to type in a restaurant that I know is around here. And again, you could, you could explore categories, everything under the sun, but I'm going to enter this edit box by pressing enter. Search for a restaurant or dish edit box. And I'm going to type in the End word of field. Lucy. And this is, again, a place I've never had. People have said it's... Dot C-L-U-C-Y. And I am down for a good burger. So I type in Lucy and I press enter. Lucy. And it's going to search for the restaurant. So I press Showing my items one to two of 80. So there are going to be results here, but I press my next thumb key. And I'll find these search results. 80 back. Lucy, edit box. So here's search, search for a restaurant. 80 restaurants. So there are 80 Lu restaurants, and you can filter and things like that. Chef Luciano, so Chef dollar Luciano, to the Budlong, eats the on Budlong, and so on. Da Luciano, wild oh, goat, man. burger, Big Tony's, epic burger. My place might not even be on here because it might not be Lino on and Lucia's Umami Burger, West okay. Loop, dollar. Since it's, I think it's at the top. I think it's is at, it at the, the very top. top. I, yeah. So again, what I can do if I'm in this list. Top. We can come back. back. Lucy, edit yeah, box. Just, Search for a restaurant or dish. 80 restaurants. Chef Lucian. 80 restaurants. Uh, Lucy's. Right. 
dollar so chicken it's the first burgers america it's right at that first top result but i was too impatient i kept going down so right where it says 80 restaurants it is the first one so we see that it says chicken burgers american um it's rated 4.6 and we also get how many ratings and that it's free delivery, which I'm all down with because a lot of restaurants from here are doing that uh, due to the current situation. So I'm going to press enter and bring up the menu. Uber Eats. Lucy's. All right, here's Lucy's. Showing right, items now, 1 to 8 of 30. What's cool about this is I'm able to search the menu. Fortunately, this is a very small menu, but sometimes let's say you're ordering from a big, huge restaurant, right? Maybe even a cheesecake factory or, or sometimes Chinese places or Indian or places that have very big, eclectic sort of menus. You can search for a dish. So if I, if I press the letter S, search menu I can search button. my menu for hamburgers or cheeseburgers or again keywords right i could just type in chicken and every single thing with chicken would pop up in this case we're going to come down and look at the actual menu from your search so, related to from my search it would have things signature that spicy fried chicken fried chicken pieces and various lucy. things here anything with the word lucy from the menu now would show up but if i come down juicy lucy burger fried pickles Picked for you. We have a picked for you section here. So again, this is always recommended dishes. So let's look at what's here. Classic burger, double patty, American cheese, onion, Dijonese, and pickles on brioche. Everyone loves a good sirloin angus steak served medium. Everyone loves a good Dijonese, as uh, the text to speech says here. <laughs> but, um, my, my wife loves, uh, or one of us will eat a classic double cheeseburger. So I am definitely going to get this. So again, if it's something you want, you read the instructions, you know, the, or the ingredients. I press enter. You and now I've brought up classic burger. classic burger. So I can press my next thumb key, and there might be some options to customize here. Up arrow, double patty, so up select it. customization okay. options. Now, could customize this. Choice of add-ons, so choose up to two. If I want add-ons, I could do that. If I wanted to actually customize the item. Select customization right, options. I could press enter here. And Not actually checked. bring up. Choice of add-ons, choose up to two. What your dish has. So sometimes it might say no pickles or no onions or something like that, depending on what the restaurant has given you the choice to do. Here. Checkbox bacon. You can add bacon. Add one dollar egg. You can add an egg. Add we don't one. need any of that. I'm just choice of dietary substitute. Here, right? You can choose a maybe to have a, a impossible burger or a veggie burger. We're not going to do that tonight. Checkbox right. quantity and then remove. You can mess with the quantity down here. You have a remove button which is disabled because you can't remove. You can't have less than one and still add it to your shopping cart. But if I come down, add. I'll give an add button. If I press enter, this will add. Um, uh, again, another instance of it. So then I'd have two in the quantity. Quantity, two. Right, so now I have two classic burgers, which I don't want. We're going to cancel. Add I one to cart. So Middle dot remove. bottom. Remove. Back down to one. Quantity, one. Right, so here's one. We're going to add it to the cart. Add. Add one to cart. Middle dot, $8.95. So I press enter. Uber Eats. Fried All right, pickle. and now that's been added to the cart. Now, I'm going to quickly, let's get a couple other things here. Picked for you. Classic burger. BLT burger. Mm. Blue burger. Double barbecue pork sandwich Andrew, burgers. If you were me and you were picking something to get on this menu for dinner, what would you, what would you, what would you choose? Well, it's certainly a burger that you're after, I'm assuming. Okay. Probably. Uh, I will get some chicken too, but I'm going to get a, some type of burger. Which one would you get? I reckon I probably would go with the, uh, the BLT burger. That a boy. All right, let's do it. Barbecue blue burger, BLT burger, double patty, American cheese, triple bacon, lettuce, tomato, and garlic aioli on brioche. Now, did you just sirloin steak because it said meat? triple bacon, or because? Uh, <laughs> so what's cool is I, uh, that's absolutely right up my alley, and I want that. So I'm gonna press enter. And again, I'm not gonna go through all those kind of options. BLT again, burger. I'm just gonna hit A and come down to add to cart. Add, add one to cart. Middle dot nine dollars and ninety cents. Press enter, and it adds that to my cart. Now I'm also going to get. My wife is a huge fan of chicken, and I heard this place has good chicken. So we're just going to get a little fried chicken, um, even if we eat it tomorrow cold. You never know. Fried pickles. BLT. Fried pickles. Dope. Juicy. Now, Lucy. I want fried chicken. For you. What I'm going to do is go to the very top of my menu. Showing items. I'm want to press S to find my search box. 
Search menu. But search menu this edit box. I dots one dots dots skip dots two so again, six. I type that in in literary braille because I see a two dot cursor here. Computer braille is not required. So I press enter on fried chicken. Chicken. Shall clear current look from your search. Signature spicy fried chicken. We're not going to do spicy. I would love it. Others might not. So. Fried chicken pieces. Lucy's famous crispy fried chicken thighs. That everybody, good. everybody wants that, Coleslaw. Right? So we're going to do some, some fried chicken pieces as well, just so we can give it a try. So Peter, you're able, you able to send it to me? <laughs> <laughs> it might not be very crispy at that point, Andrew. I don't, I don't think. Choice of quantity right. is required. So we need to choose a quantity here. I tried to add it to the card. It said no, so let's come up. Add. Disable quantity one Lucy's secret sauce dill pickle ranch honey must house honey so butter guessing. buttermilk check box choice of dipping sauces four pieces. four pieces two pieces four pieces four pieces two pieces so we're gonna get two pieces of fried chicken just so we can say we've tried it selected two pieces and now we're gonna come down. all other cho four choice of dip check box buttermilk ranch. Yeah. At 95 honey butter. At 95 cents. Yeah, my wife is a big fan of honey butter. I think that's... House barbecue. I think we're going to have to do the honey butter for her sake. Honey butter. At check. All right. And it says checked. So again, I'm just I'm just checking my options. Come down to the bottom. Bottom. Add one to cart. Add one to cart. Middle dot. Oh. Uber Eats. All right. So again, the, the point here being we're adding... Um, we're adding these to the, to the order. So I have chicken, uh, a couple pieces of fried chicken, and I have burgers and I'm going to come down and I, I think we're good. We, we don't need fries. Um, they're probably good, but sometimes fries aren't that great when they get delivered. You always have to warm them up and uh, they can get a little soggy and that kind of drives me nuts, but we are going to come and actually check out. So uh, I'm going to come to the very bottom of my page because I'm assuming I'll have a shopping cart option down here. Bottom. Add to favorite. So I can favorite this restaurant if I come up with my previous thumb key. Up arrow, up arrow, button, fried chicken pieces, signature spicy fried, award winning spicy fried chicken pieces, Lucy's famous signature spicy fried bottom, add to favorites, but bottom, up arrow, button, Lucy's lower than average prices, today, 545, 4.6, delivery fee is menu, change menu, search menu, button, if you, if you exit so out, search. let me get out of this. Yeah, get out of that yeah. search. That's why. So I'm pressing my triangle. Now, if I come to the bottom, I should have my cart. Add to favorites. Bob arrow button. Twenty eight dollars from your search related to loot bottom. Twenty eight dollars and eighty cents. View so card. Here, there's my three. Carts. I have three Showing items. items. Twenty th so three items in my cart. Twenty eight eighty. And I'm going to press enter. Bring up my cart. Uber Eats. Back. But Button. now at this point, I can add a tip and do things like that. So let's get through that quickly, and then we'll submit my order. People also ordered golden fries, lightly salted, two dollars and ninety-five cents. Oh, I might have to do it. <laughs> Cheese fries, oh, man. Fri we'll golden we'll fries, fries, lightly salted, I, I can't help it. golden fries, lightly salted. Bottom. Add one to cart. She'll, she'll Middle me dot. Later. Two. All your right. cart. One. One. One, so now I have my five, order one, here, right? my fries, my cart, my different things in, and I see I can edit them if I want to. Utensils, straws, etc. Now, this is the new part of Uber Eats. To cut down on waste, you have to tell them if you do want utensils. I don't need them. These items won't be added unless you ask. So we don't need that. Switch off. Ask for what you want. Right. Zero promotions available. Show your support with a tip. So we are going to show our support with a tip. Um, if we look down here, we'll have choices. Your tip is sent to the courier one hour after 10%. 3 dot 15 percent four dollars and 76 20 percent six dollars and 15 percent four four dollars and seven back button check out so now we've chosen our tip bottom schedule order button. now you'll also see that my credit card information is here obviously not the whole number Visa card ending with 2000 right, my card and what it ends with. So if you need to add a payment method, you can do that. Again, this app is very, very accessible. It's great. The whole experience is great. I can review my order. By placing your order with total sure $44.52. Kind of a pricey burger and fries dinner, but hey, we're supporting local. Um, we haven't eaten out much in the last couple of weeks, so 
taxes three dollars and tip four dollars your kind of service fee your tip and your taxes here and you'll also see at the top you should see the time i believe top delivery options copyright 2020 google yeah, map you could come down and actually see in your delivery options you can get a sense leave of, the door. of when they're going to bring leave it in. the door so i leave have all that, that i'm going to come down Ask and say for what you want join to, uber e bottom i'm sorry schedule, schedule order so at the very button. bottom is my schedule order I'm going to press enter i'm not adding any more fries i would if i really went back there i had a milkshake i'm not doing it i'm pressing enter <laughs> And at this point, it's going to schedule my order for delivery, and then I should be brought to food in your area. Um, Past orders. Now it's been done. Showing so, item two and then or two. There's other things in Top. here. Things I've ordered. Upcoming before, Lucy's. And so, on. so here's upcoming. Two. April 14, 5:45 p.m. minus 6:15 p.m. Deliver to A26. Right? And now it's here, so it's showing that it's upcoming. So again, not about knowing exactly how to use this app. You can see I wasn't super familiar with the, a couple of things here. Um, like I was in my search and I forgot to back out to find my cart, but it is very usable. And I also, even if you're not ordering food, it never hurts to know what's on a restaurant around you. Maybe there's somewhere you, where you go with your family for breakfast on, on the weekend or somewhere you'd like to try and you just don't know what's there. Sometimes it can be kind of intimidating um, when you go to a restaurant and you know what you want. You just don't want to spend a lot of time asking for menus or maybe you're you know, in a line and you're, you're, you just don't want to hold up the line and so on. So it can really be useful. And that's how I utilize these services in addition to ordering burgers and fries on a Lucy's Tuesday night. Two, April four, Lucy's the main menu. Two. April 14, contacts, Keyleth, for listening to this showing items one to six and watching this wonderful sort of live, humanware live webinar. And I'm going to unshare my screen and I'm going to unmute my speech and we're going to take some questions. You ready to rumble, Andy? Oh, ready. I mean, I'm hungry after watching that. I don't know about everyone <laughs> yeah, else, but exactly. uh, it, it's my time o'clock now. It's six o'clock for me here. It's perfect time to have a burger. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay, let's go and have a look at some questions as uh, a lot of people raise their hands as well. Uh, let's go through the, the chat. Um, so one of the questions was, so do you need to have your speech on to hear where you are? Or does that pop up in the refreshable braille as well? And I think that relates to the cell when we're talking of Google Sheets. So that um, will be in the braille as well as in speech. So you do not need to have speech on. Um, generally, I do that for these so everyone can kind of hear where I am. But it will be on the refreshable braille display. Um, the cell values or content. Anything that's spoken is going to be on the real display. Awesome. Okay. And uh, another one is when I click on a cell in Sheets, nothing happens. Is that probably because they're only clicking it once as opposed yeah. to clicking it twice? The first time you click it, you might be selecting that cell and you, you may have to, you're going to have to tap, tap. You're going to have to use that router key two times. If you're using the old Braille Note Touch, it will be a little different. You probably have to double tap on the cell and then go find it, will, which will select the cell. And then you need to find the enter text or formula edit box because the app has changed um, over time. Cool. Okay. Uh, one coming. I would get the meat such as chicken and chips. Well, <laughs> that sounds like your side of the pond, man. <laughs> uh, I'm hungry now, says a comment on, from <laughs> <Love> Sam. <it. laughs> Okay, uh, let's answer some calls. Let's have a look. That's, uh, okay, we have Ben King. Okay, Ben King. Ben King, welcome. You are unmuted, by us at least. Yep. Hello, Ben. They always sneak in. We'll do a we'll do a three second rule. And Ben, if if we'll, we can, if you um, send us a chat, maybe we'll come back to you in two. Here we go. Oh, he nearly One. had it. He, what, he nearly and had it on a second. Unmute again. There we go, Ben. There you go, Hello, Ben. We hear Hi. you. Um, I do have a question. Great. And that is, will you guys be uh, doing 5G with this tablet? Or because a lot of the Android uh, phones will have 5 Do you have 5G in them? And I'm just wondering if you if you guys will be. Um, you know, sending out an update, you know, will, that will be including 5G? So it's a great question. And the answer is no. So to get that sort of cellular support, and I will support 5G modems, but if you're talking about 5G mobile networks, the answer is no. Because we would need to go through FCC approval and have all of that done at a licensing level. And there, there's a lot involved with getting cellular or mobile connection. So we do support 5G routers. 
um, five gigahertz routers, but not the 5G networks. There's no cellular service on the device. So if you're looking to use it while you're out and about, you would use that in conjunction with a hotspot. Okay, all righty, all righty. And then uh, what chip are you guys using in this? And, and is this device the latest? Yeah, so we're using a, um, oh man, chip, Snap, Andrew, it's Snap, the uh, Snapdragon, Snapdragon 820. 820. Yep. So Snapdragon 820. Um, and, and yes, it, this is running. This is our latest device. This is running Android 8.1. Um, but it's, you know, it, you're, you're able to install those modern apps. So it's okay. definitely right. running, running Android. Do you guys have plans to upgrade to Android 10? Uh, there is there is plans in the pipeline to upgrade and we can upgrade our Android version. Uh, currently, though, we're really focusing on um, updating some key soft enhancements. Um, that's where our users get the real real value. Um, but yes, we will be updating at some point. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot, Ben. Thank you Thanks, so ben. much. Rock and roll. Okay. Next is um, Natalia. Hello, Natalia. Natalia, are you there? Natalia. Natalia. Natalia or Natalia. I like, I like either. <laughs> Natalia, you are should be unmuted. Although on your end, you may be muted. We're gonna do our two, one. All right, Natalia, we'll come back to you. Let's try a couple more, Andrew. Okay, uh, let's go to Mary Carla Hayes. Hello, Mary Carla Hayes. All right, you are okay, on. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Oh, good. I've got two questions. Get rid of this jaws. Okay. Um, my questions are, first of all, a real general one. After this um, coronavirus disaster goes away, these um, webinars aren't going to go away because I'm behind. I just started tuning in. They're going to still be there, right? Yes. So everything is archived um, and we're working on a whole new, an actual live webinar page as opposed to, if they're on our website, if you go to support, all of our webinars are there. Um, this is the 10th one. We will keep these going in some fashion. Um, we're not going to do them twice a week when everything's back to normal, but we will definitely keep them going. Uh, but, but the old will, ones will be there to promote. Oh, certainly. To. Yes. They're okay, all then the on other our Human Wear Buddy application. So. And the other question I had on the newly acquired Touch Plus is, um, I assume you have to install Uber Eats. Is that yes, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so what do I need to know about installing it? Do you have to choose a credit card or how? Oh, absolutely. Occur? Any of that, any of those services, you're going to have to create an account um, and you're going to have to link your payment and you're probably going to have to validate your phone or email address or there are just different steps you're going to have to do what's required of you by that third party um, service such as Grubhub or Uber, Uber Eats or whatever it is you need to just create an account and and, and kind of get it get it logged in using and the you, application and you you could link it to your gmail account that you sure. have for your touch right yes yes you so Generally it's, yeah it's no problem and, and I really appreciate what you guys are doing well we appreciate your attendance thank you yeah thank you Mary take care all right. Okay, so uh, we now have, let's uh, so we'll look through the list. We have Laurelli. Laurelli? Is that how you say Lorelei. Lorelei. <laughs> <laughs> I like this game just as much because there will be some British names. How's it going, Lorelei? You say my name a little bit less correctly, Andrew. Lorelei. <laughs> Hi, Lorelei. <laughs> okay. Do apologize. I don't worry. Um, anyway, so I was going to ask, um, Uber Eats is like the only one of the deliver, uh, delivery apps that isn't available in my area. I was going to ask about uh, if, <laughs> I was going to ask about resources for the accessibility of apps. I know, what am I trying to say? I know there used to be a page on the website that had like the apps. Like recommended the, apps? Yeah. yeah. You know, there was, we didn't have very much participation in it. And quite frankly, it's very hard to do something like that without participation because what I showed you today can work great today. And unfortunately can all break next week or next month or in four months when somebody else goes to look. So it's useful, but we found if you're looking for an Android resource, you can try inclusive Android. Um, but the best way to, to kind of, that I've always found is you just have to do some exploring. Um, some parts, you know, it, it can be frustrating at first, but it definitely is something you just, 
you just never know until you open it up and start wandering around, whether it's, you know, DoorDash or Uber Eats or Spotify or, or TuneIn Radio or, you know, there are so <laughs> many third-party apps. And generally what I tell everyone is you will find a solution. Um, definitely not always going to be your first try um, at looking with something, you know, looking at an app. But I always find that there's generally a way and usually something's pretty accessible. So, um, you know, I, I would encourage you to explore. I'm happy to, we're, you know, we're happy to look at things if there's inquiries, but what we will not do is I will never write this out in a step-by-step -step guide just because I would spend so much time doing it or making a video. No, of course not. You'd have to revise it every hour. Right. And, and that I kind of is, can be tricky. So, but, but we're happy to look. I mean, I'm always happy if, if it's helpful, if, you know, if someone says, Hey, I want you to review such and such an app. Um, and, and maybe, maybe I can, and sometimes I can't, but uh, unfortunately there's, there's nothing on our end at this point, um, but I would in, I would encourage you to go to Inclusive Android um, and look look through that site because sometimes there are some great reviews on on Android apps. Also, just YouTube. Sometimes you can find great resources through through YouTube. You know, people using the app to do something, whether it's iOS or, or Android or or you know just kind of how to how to problem problems you know problem solve through those things. So, mm -hmm. but rock and roll. Now you know you can use Uber Eats. <laughs> well, it's not available in my area. That's why I was asking about the others because oh, like, I would try them. Grubhub like, works well. Um, okay, I'm not they're sure, available you know. in my area. Yeah, DoorDash is another one. I mean, I, I would just try those. And if something isn't perfect, you just say, you know, you can always reach out to them and say this this isn't working or, or trying to address the app developer to follow accessibility yeah, I've, guidelines. I've advocated for accessibility in iOS to developers before because I can usually, you know, put reasonable effort into stating my, my requests clearly. So for sure. I, yeah, yeah. I know how to do they're willing that. To. That's awesome. That's awesome. You will find a service. I, I guarantee it. I might also do one of these on ordering groceries. I haven't figured out. We're really going to surprise my wife when I do that one, but uh, trying to buy <laughs> some, some groceries to do through like Instacart or one of those. So thanks a lot, Lorelai. Thanks, Lorelai. Thank you. Two, okay. Uh, two so, more. Right. Uh, we have Theo. Hello, Theo. Hello. Well, which newsletter do you have to subscribe to? subscribe to to be able to perceive about the webinar is it just a general she would wear one or is there a special she would wear live that's an awesome question so you you can subscribe to the general or the the braille note one i believe would receive that too theo but when you're on our website when you click on that subscribe button there are different choices and the general newsletter um should should get you you know the webinar announcements and also any sort of uh general humanware kind of product updates and things there is yeah. also a Braille note specific one and, and for the different products as well. I'm just saying I subscribed to that a year ago and I got a confirmation email, but I've never ever received any emails from it. I tried to subscribe again, the same thing happened, so it's just a bit annoying really. Hmm. Can you uh, send, send, send us, us send us I've a checked, note I've, at humanware live uh, at humanware.com and I'll make sure we'll we'll figure out what's going on there. Yeah. Because it definitely. could be getting filtered. I have no idea. So I'm just saying that also you can contact an app developer in, in the Play Store in their app entry. It says developer contact. So then you just click on that and you can send an email easily. For sure. Absolutely, Theo. You are correct. Yeah. You are thanks absolutely so much, correct. Yeah. Love it. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for coming on in. One more, Andy. Okay. So let's try Natalia. 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 <laughs> Hello. 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 All right. Great. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Uh, so, sorry about the first time. I, I usually use this app on our program on my Mac. And today I was trying it on my Windows PC for fun. Oh, no so, problem. You're I'm fine. Just a trick. Confused. If you hit Alt A, that will uh -huh. mute and unmute your audio in, win in, um, in, in Windows. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so my, uh, first I want to say thank you guys so much for doing this. Actually, I was thinking last night that I wanted to learn how to add, uh, applications to my main menu. So <laughs> I think you read my mind. Andrew, Andrew. read your thank mind. You. That's exactly what <laughs> happened there. There you go. Yep. Um, and, uh, I was also going to say that there is another way to uninstall applications and I like it. Um, if you're in the play store, um, you can uninstall them there. So you just go to your, um, you go to the navigation drawer and then to my apps and games and find the application that you want to, uh, uninstall yes. and yes. open that up. And rather than it being, uh, 
rather than hitting the open button, you just keep going down, uh, scrolling down, and there's a, an install button. Absolutely. Or you can press the letter U. Yes, you can so, also yep. uninstall that way as well. Absolutely. Yep. I just wanted to mention that because sometimes you might still be in the Play Store and uh, sure. doing something in there, and <clears throat> it can be useful rather than having to go back to your yeah. main menu and all that. Sure. Love it. Definitely. Definitely. So, thank you guys thank you. so okay. much. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you. Yeah. All okay, right. so I'm just going to read through some of these quick chat questions here. Um, so, hey, I just wanted to say for all the Apple Music users that Apple Music app is super accessible. Great. Uh, will you guys ever upgrade the processor in the device? The, for example, you will put the processor of one of the new Samsung devices. Also, when will you guys upgrade Android? Well, we've just answered the question on the current chip that we're using, and uh, we will be planning to upgrade Android at some point. Um, are your app up and running? Or is your app up and running yet? We attended a seminar that you discussed about it. So that's from Wanda. So uh, probably referring to that HW Buddy app. Yes, it's available now on both the iOS and Play Store. So just search for Humanware or HW Buddy and you'll be able to, to install that. Um, okay, so uh, DoorDash is accessible. Uh, yes. You are the Facebook brand. I love DoorDash. Group. Okay. Uh, if you have any crowd, okay, awesome. So that pretty much is it. Oh, gonna... um, one last question: Are there any plans to integrate Keyword with cloud storage so that documents can be directly open into Keyword from the cloud? Response to that: Yes, we will be. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, that'll definitely happen. Uh, they, the 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 tools exist to do it, so we'll we'll definitely be able to bring that in. Um, as we as we move forward, 100%. So you'll be able to have direct drive integration with with your, you know, or, or cloud integration, not drive, but cloud integration with key files. Okay, and there is one person that has been dying to ask a question for some time now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer. It's Oscar. Oscar, Oscar. you can have the last word. Last word, Oscar. Hello. Hello. Hi, Oscar. I've been dying to ask a question. So, and, uh, Andrew is um, DoorDash like, uh, used by in the UK. So, is that available in the UK? DoorDash. Uh, no, uh, that's a great question. A great question. I've, <laughs> I've never. You used might have DoorDash. to do a quick Google search there, my friend. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, it, it's definitely here in the States, but I don't know what delivery services may be available in the UK. So you might have to, you might have to do some Googling um, to figure that one out, Oscar. Unfortunately, we, I don't know. And Andrew, Andrew, Andrew doesn't use food delivery services because he gets just such phenomenal food made at home. He doesn't have to order anything. <laughs> well, look at, I'm just looking at a quick, a quick search on the DoorDash. Uh, I think it's uh, purely for the US, um, I believe. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe it's actually... No, it's not. It's not available um, at this stage in the UK for the, for the looks of that. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. Not yet, at least, Oscar. A lot of times those things can can take shape. And you might have other services um, that are... Yeah, that we don't have to... yeah. I actually ordered something last week. Awesome. Yeah, just, just eat will work, yes, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, everybody, uh, for attending another episode of Humanware Live. We will be back on Thursday, and we will be looking at what are we looking at Thursday, Andrew? Uh, we are lo looking at YouTube. Uh, we're looking at um, other fun stuff, I believe. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't, we need to look. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know YouTube you, is on the list. <laughs> you, you have to come back though and tell us how the food was. You're gonna have. To oh, dude, it's gonna be awesome. I'm. I uh my I heard my wife just got home. She was she was getting running some errands, so she's gonna I'm gonna have to show her what uh, or I'll just let it show up. Actually, it might might even be more fun. So I I will report back. Definitely, and let us know how those chips are. Whether oh, they yeah. are fried or soggy. <laughs> oh, they're gonna be good. I had to give oh. in. So awesome. Okay, Thanks, well, everybody. That's it, everybody. Thanks, everyone, and take care.